Kia ora koutou everyone, welcome along to another episode of Rig Rundown's Aotearoa. I'm here today in the studio uh, with the band Mim, uh, here at Loho Studios I should say. Uh, and very fortunate today to be inter- interviewing uh, Ruben Ishram. Kia ora. Great to be here, bro. Happy to be here, man. Really happy. I, uh, yeah. So you're recording two singles, you said? Yeah, two singles today for yep. the uh, and hopefully to kind of come out with some more releases next year. Mm-hmm. We've got um, yeah a lot of stuff in the works planned. Um, kind of have done a few demos here and there at different studios, but this is finally coming into the the, the final streak before we get it out there. And really, really excited. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And uh, I take it this is one of the main gats for it? This is the main guitar for Mim. This is, um, I only picked it up three months ago. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's the first semi hollow I've had. It's an Italia Fiorano. Yeah. Um, it's not an Italian brand. It's, it's actually, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're made in Korea. I think they're an American company. Yeah. Um, and I absolutely love it. Love it so much. It's, it's a really cool guitar. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful to look at. Yeah. And uh, God, when you were tuning up and having a bit of a play before, it's really, really warm sounding. Mm. Yeah. Oh, like definitely. Yeah. Really, really warm sounding. Yeah, really, really warm sounding. It's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful guitar. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, Single at the front and a humbucker. P90, at the yeah, P90 at the front, yep. which I just love, which is one of the reasons why I got it. I think P90s have got to be my most just loved pickup. Yeah. You get that brightness of a single chord without the, the losing the thickness. Yes, there's, there's that roundness around the yeah. note. Yeah. Yes, it's a way to sort of describe yeah, it. Totally, totally. Yeah, totally. It's just got a real thick sound. It's uh, it's super awesome. I really, really like it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that sort of we are generally on that guitar on that neck P90? Yes, pretty much for this band, yep. like entirely. Um, and, and at the moment, I, I have some other plans down the line which I can talk about. But at the moment, this band is entirely on this guitar, and it's why I bought it. Um, yeah. I was using my Comanche um, for that, my GNL. Mm. Um, but we went and did a session with Ben Edwards sitting room mm-hmm. um, and that was a really interesting experience but one of the things that I got out of it is I ended up using this old 80s Ibanez SG lawsuit. It was a Gibson and an Ibanez, you know, Ibanez logo on it and it had these bare knuckle P90s in it and a really, really loose flimsy Bigsby that would just go out of tune every time. <laughs> but I really liked that sound, it was a bit more full than that Strat sort of sound. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, I knew that I wanted a different guitar for this band because it's a different band to what I've been in and it's it's a different sound and yeah this one came into the shop and I loved it I picked it up and just wanted it straight away and couldn't afford it it wasn't super expensive it's actually you know it's the cheapest electric guitar I've ever owned yeah in actual fact it's you know retails about 1400 wow, yeah. um, but I got a really good tax refund and I just said fuck it and I bought it on the day you know um, and such I'm a, such a classic muso story, eh? Yeah. Tax rebate comes in, off to the music store. Exactly that, exactly <laughs> that. So it's, it's awesome. So it's got, it's got that really nice P90. And I don't really use the middle position much. It's a little bit too kind of indecisive. I like it a lot, but I think what I like about this is really cranking all the way up and getting that. Literally about to ask yeah. you about the feedback. Yeah, what's that like, especially on on stage? Yeah, it's um, it's definitely feedback. present. Um, thankfully, I love it. I want yeah. the feedback. I've really and you'll hear when these set tracks come out. Um, yeah, we've done some pretty cool stuff, including I've I cranked up the Vibralux with my gain on full to about seven, which is really loud, and just <laughs> yeah. fed it back. And I like to. We can do it, but now I feel like we're thinking too loud. Sure, here we go. Yeah, block Watch your ears, your ears boys. Views. Woo-hoo! 
Yeah. It's 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 it, it's angry. <laughs> it but is. It's kind yeah. of polite in its angriness. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's very very manageable. I haven't yeah. had many feedback issues on stage. When I'm playing, obviously, it's way more controllable. Um, but when you're it's just when you're sitting with your you know with your, your volume on your hands off your strings, you get it. But if you can brace that, it's awesome. I love it. So that's another reason why I have that. And we have yeah. another track that will be released later on in the year that we really embrace it and, and the cue for the drums is just like a few seconds of feedback and then he comes in and it's it's awesome so <laughs> so so cool we even on this on one of the singles we're doing hits like hell we even embraced it where i put the gain up and i actually just yelled into the guitar and you can hear this distorted delayed p90 tone screaming through it it's it's really really weird and wicked wicked this is so this is on the, on the signal yeah this, on one of the singles yeah excellent i'm yeah. looking forward to that yeah yeah, out, yeah 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 that's very very cool and one final question uh yeah bigsby's love them how's the tuning with it that's so good it's yeah? so so good i really have no issues um it's it's got a, it's got a rolling bridge as well which means and it was factory so i really don't have any issues with um like tuning at all i thought i would but they've really they've really embraced um the fact that if you want a big you have to add everything else to go with the big so it's got locking tuners on the back mm -hmm. it's got um, rolling bridge and it's just set up really well i really have actually probably the least amount of tuning issues with this guitar out of anything it's it's incredible yeah yeah Beautiful really, to look really at too. Yeah. What uh, what gauge strings are you running there, bro? At the moment, I'm running ten to forty six elixirs. Yeah. Um, which I have a love hate relationship with. <laughs> I I really like them on this guitar. They sit well, and they don't you don't lose that kind of depth. Yeah. Um, I've done nines a bit, not on this guitar, mm -hmm. and I do like nines for some reason. I feel like you do lose a bit of twang. I always used to bullshit that, but I really do feel like if you're playing clean, especially, you do lose a bit of that mid-range which makes it a bit harder mm -hmm. but um it's one of those things some like on yeah. on its own when you're playing they sound lovely yeah, but in yeah, a mix yeah, yeah, yeah. they start to get a bit lost maybe yeah exactly um but yeah i've, I've been yeah I've, i think that what, what i'm thinking about doing with the comanche later on now i'm us not using it as much as actually putting 11s or 12s on it and trying to get a bit of a baritone sort of thing going, thing going maybe going down to like drop c sharp mm. not that i play heavy for that still for that clean sound but i really yeah. want to differentiate and that's what i was kind of thinking of maybe bringing into this band later on the line yeah. more embarrassing speaking sound. of the comanche yeah um the, the gnl deluxe comanche yeah? should i get it out yeah yeah absolutely i'd love to see that thing i, I love the way it looks with those mm. uh split uh, split singles <clears throat> so the gnl deluxe comanche yeah the fullerton deluxe leo Fem last stand so to speak it is huh? exactly that yeah <laughs> Beautiful guitar. And nice and quiet with the split singles, yeah? Yeah, so uh, there's Z coils, so <clears throat> the way I understand it works is it's like it's an early version of your sort of noiseless um, pickups kind of coming in the 80s, mm -hmm. where it's got the benefits of the humbucker where you've got the two coils going the opposite ways, yeah. but they're using the same coil. So it's winding around like this and then doing a figure of eight. So one way is going that way and the other so way ends up going that way. So it's still the same coil. Same coil, but doing the, the function. So you, you get a little bit of that humbucking sound as well, yep. which I think I quite like. Yep. It's still single coil. It's a bit like a P90 in that sense, I think. It's, it doesn't have that brightness and like just shrill high end that you get out of those um, Fender, especially the older Fender, like 50s and 60s yep. pickups. Um, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's really nice. I should probably take all the plastic off. I've still got a bunch of plastic under the knobs and stuff, but too busy playing it. Eh? Yeah, pretty much. So <laughs> it's got that. It's got a, an S1 switching sort of system in here, mm -hmm. which means I'm able to access seven positions overall. So you got your bridge, you know, your normal ones. One, two, three, four, five. But then if I go up here and I switch this on, I access on the one and five positions. It's tally. Uh, it's tally style, yeah, so this one and this one here, you're bridging your neck, bypassing the middle. Mm -hmm. So you get a little bit more of that. A bit more of that sort of tally sort of sound. But then on here, I get all three pickups on. So you get a re you get that Fender quack, like, you really... <laughs> It's like 
like the Fender Quack on steroids. It is, eh? It is, yeah. but it, it but still got that depth because you're getting yeah. all three. So when I'm sort of when I'm playing with my um, other band Kimono, I'm definitely sitting on that a lot lately. You get that funky sort of sound really well. Then. So that's really cool. Yeah. Quite. Um, well, not quite. I was going to say it's it is darker than your your pure singles on a strap, totally. but not. Not as much as I would have expected. No, no, not, yeah. not at all. You still get a really good... Um, yeah. yeah. It's, it just feels like it's kind of like strats that have grown up a little bit and kind of just matured a bit, you know? I guess, I guess in a sense that's what they were because, yeah. you know, Leo Fender's last company was GL. Exactly, exactly. Um, and he was always perfecting that design, I guess. Yeah, he, yeah. Um, he, he was quoted to say that GNLs are his best guitars. Yeah. What, um, what was... What was what was what got you into GNLs? You know, were, were um, you playing Strats and you saw them or you heard about them? Or? I think my first GNL I got when I was it was my first sort of um, electric guitar that I bought. I think it was my first electric guitar that I bought. Get a bit of noise there. Um, it was my first electric guitar that I bought. It was a a GNL A set, mm -hmm. which a tribute series one, which is the Indonesian range. Yep. So I bought that when I was about seventeen. Semi hollow, Telecaster basically. Yep. Um, it was cool. It was like. Um, Burst with a purloid pick guard, if all up here, and two MFD um, single sort of coils. Thin line, thin line type. Sort thing, of thin yeah. line, but not as not. It's more like just a, it's it's like if you took a tally and just made it um, semi hollow without all the other th th thin line stuff. So same pick guard and s like similar pick pickups and sort of stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, really, really cool. Uh, so I had that, and that was the uh, the Indonesian ones, which are really good. They still put the same pickups in them as the US, so it's the same pickups, same bridge, and everything. Is that right? Yeah, and they're only like a thousand bucks, so it was a really good deal. <sighs> so I had that, uh, and then I didn't play electric for a long time. I played mo mainly acoustic, mm -hmm. and then when I sort of started getting into my band stuff again about eighteen months ago, um, I really needed that Strat sort of sound. Um, and I work at a music shop, so I. Um, naturally started playing lots of guitars and found this one which was yeah. my favorite of the pick and and, and sold that one yeah. get this one and i i don't regret it too much but because i don't think i really did like it that much i wasn't i wouldn't have used it but there's always yeah. that kind of like oh you know it would be nice to have kind of thing. <laughs> so that's how i got into them um yeah i i, I really like gnls a lot I've, I've gone through a big wave of really kind of going ah oh, they're better than fenders don't buy a fender i think they do what Leo Fender wanted better, but mm -hmm. there's still that classic Fender thing that nothing else is really beaten by if you want that sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So they're really great guitars. Yeah, beautiful. So it's a three piece as well. Yep, three piece. You can. Yep. It's a really well done three piece. It's you ash. Can yeah? See, yeah, swamp ash. Swamp ash. You can yeah. kind of see on the the tail there the, the cuts yeah. there, but on top it's yeah, you really can well barely done. See it here. Really, really good. Yeah, so swamp ash body, hard yeah. rock maple neck. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a single piece, so it's not a laminate on top. Uh, I actually, Ooh. I think it is a laminate on top, okay. yeah, yeah. I think it is. Again, really nicely done. Really, though. really, really nicely done. Yeah. GNL has, I think, 29 employees, I think last time I heard. Wow. Okay. Employed by the actual company. Obviously, they're outsourced for a lot of their factory stuff, but yeah. they have their factory on Fender Avenue, just down the road from Fender, which must be <laughs> awkward. Um, and they're just really small team. Um, everything's done by hand and you know there's a little bit of CNC routing but pretty much mainly still using um, just your classic shop tools and getting into it. Um, In a sense really, it sort really of good. harkens back to I yep. guess what Leo started. Pickups are still wound, yeah. uh, wound on Leo's personal pickup winder. It's, it's, wow, it's really? the same one he was using when he started the company. Yep, they've still got it. So I don't know if all of them are wound on that but I know yeah. the custom shop ones are and maybe these ones as well. That's so very, very, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and one final question on this. The bridge obviously quite a different design. Yeah, so um, it's the dual fulcrum. Yeah. So the dual fulcrum which you see on a lot of fenders now was a GNL sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So having the two points there just increases your tuning stability um so i hear mm. um and it has a, a trim arm that i don't use very often as well yeah um, there as well what year is this one too 2019. So 2019 so it's the last yeah. it's the last run that you get the signature of phyllis fender on the the certificate because then she passed away so this this i've got the, the certificate with it and it's got you know approved by home, yeah. phyllis fender you know yeah second best to leo <laughs> and um yeah no, you can't get those anymore so it's kind of it's kind of a cool wee era that maybe we'll have a bit of value to it one day yeah yeah yeah, give us a bit more of that uh, quack or whatever you feel, man. Yeah. I love listening to that.
nice and sort of woody sort of acoustic -y tones out of it as well. So playing a bit of acoustic on these yeah songs? yeah potentially it's in here we don't know uh, yeah we haven't got it on yet but yeah I'll, I'll grab that out as well have we yeah look? that'd be great to have a look at that what is this beauty and Alvarez you said yeah yeah Alvarez Masterworks MPA 70 parlor guitar mm -hmm. now this is Alvarez is the overseas version of uh, Yari so I don't know the full relation I know that they are definitely intertwined somehow yeah so I know that they're based in st. Louis st. Louis mm -hmm. um, Based in St. Louis, um, and this one is, I think it's made in China actually. It's just, yeah, I mean, it wasn't an expensive guitar. I think it was about a 1200 maybe when I got it. Yep. Um, and I've kind of been super close to upgrading and getting a Martin or a Larravee a few times, but something just keeps pulling me back. It is just really good. Yep. Um, it's all solid. Sitka spruce top, rosewood back in the sides, I think. Um, and yeah, just really, really nice. beautiful kind of tone and timbre to it. I've played it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, really, really nice. Yeah. Love this uh, abalone binding yeah. and everything too. Or yeah, power it's, it's, as we call it, it in is our beautiful, title, yeah. So I think their relationship to um, Yairi is the two separate companies, but they've done a lot of work and designs. And I know that there was like a high end run of um, Alvarez's that maybe were designed by Kay Yari. Mm. They have the same bridge or a very similar one as well. Yeah. But I know, yeah, I, I know that we, you, not so much anymore, but you are able to get, we were able to get Yari's in New Zealand. Yeah. And Alvarez's. Yeah, I know a couple of guys who have had them. But I, I know that uh, Kay Yari died a few years ago, so things have changed for that a lot. For, so I don't know if it's in anything to do with that. I think he was still working when he passed away. Mm. So um, whether or not they've stopped making them or stopped making them the same way because of his death, I'm not sure. But I'm, I'm still, you know, I, th I think his high range, he was still making them. Yeah. Um, they've definitely changed. It, all I know is that since he passed, it's been harder to get them in New Zealand. Yeah. But um, this is just a beautiful... If you want a Yairi, you know, you get an Alvarez, really. And Alvarez mainly do lower range entry level guitars, but they do have a small range of high ends and they're really special guitars. I think, I, yeah, I, yeah. This, is, this is one for the viewers. Uh, please feel free to, in the comments, uh, fill us in on all the info you know Absolutely. about Yairi and Alvarez. Um, from what I've um, heard over the years mm. is that the, like the, the, the master built, Yari series yeah. are sold overseas as like high end Alvarez. Right. I think okay. I think that's how I've got it. Again, yeah. please correct me in the comments. Yeah, I really um, have no idea actually. Yeah, I'm I'm literally sifting through many years here too, but uh, mm. but yeah. But it's either it's way, it doesn't visual, matter. Yeah. It sounds beautiful. It's really full it sound. Looks beautiful, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yep, I've got a Seymour Duncan mag mic in there now for my live shows, so that does the job for the acoustic um, pickup as well. Yeah, Excellent. beauty, beauty. Cool. Um, we'll move on to the... Uh, cool, yeah, perfect. Thing. 
Yeah, so we're back on the Italia. Yeah. And uh, let's have a look at these goodies you got on the floor here, mate. Yeah, I mean, my pedal board is pretty embarrassing, to be honest. At the moment, it really needs a bit of tender love and care. <laughs> um, it, it, it's in actual fact, it's not even my board itself. I think my, my flatmate Mitchell donated it, handed it down to me when the bag broke, so the zip doesn't shut. <laughs> um, and that's actually his, his chorus pedal as well. The B-Yang. The B-Yang, yeah. Um, but it, it does the job. I need a better power supply. I haven't got around to doing that, and mm. I get heaps of noise, but, you know... It's all part of the fun. You never want to spend the money on the power supplies. You just want to buy the pedals, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's have a let's have a listen to that Bian because I've sure. I've got a little bit of a connection to those two. It was my first ever ever guitar pedal. It's going to give well, us a actually, lot of noise. <laughs> yeah, I actually used it on bass, but it was my first yeah. ever pedal, and for so I think they're Chinese or Taiwanese made, but they have the Boss C2 chip in them. Is that right? I think something like that. Yeah, they're yeah. basically just. I think it, my. My um, my mate Mitchell Mitchell Dwyer Mitch Mitch Zachary um, he he got it on AliExpress I think for about thirty bucks yeah 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 it's a really nice chorus I don't use it very much in fact it's not used any on any it's actually never plugged in because of the noise um, it's just on the board because it's on the board but um, <laughs> it is when I need it it's really good you get those kind of really wobbly sounds you know, I really love a really really thick chorus something that makes me feel like I'm underwater. Yeah. So that's really, really nice. Drowning in a sea of course. Yeah, really, really, really <laughs> drowning, yeah. So this is that. Yeah. Um, then we go into my hustle drive. So this is um, this is actually Cam Walsh's. I bought that off him a while back, um, just because, again, when I was still building my pedal board, all I had was a uh, another Chinese clone of a tube screamer, and it just wasn't really that. I didn't really want a bluesy drive. I wanted something at the time where I could go from clean to really driven, just for solos. Mm -hmm. I would just be super clean, and then do like a kind of proggy kind of solo over top. And so I got this off him. <laughs> feedback of the <laughs> um, so I got that of him and it's good it's it's another clone another Chinese clone you can see kind of like a, a theme going on here it's a Chinese clone of a full tone OCD um, and it does a really good job I usually run it for this band usually with drive on half or all the way on depending on the song because what I'll do is I, I really do that kind of sitting on the volume knob so I have the drive all the way on mm. and I might even just turn this down a bit when I do this um, and then I'll, from, for the clean part, so just have a little bit of that saturation. A lot of, a lot of parts of my, a lot of parts of my arrangement for this band are just a lot of filling in the gaps with kind of single strums and, and Bigsby while Nim carries the, the, the rhythm guitar. Mm -hmm. But um, that also allows me to be able to roll on that drive. <laughs> Well, but then you know, come right back to my chords when I need to. Mm. So I can do both with that, which is really, really nice. Um, really fat sounding. Really, really fat. fat. That's fat those P90s as well. That yeah. You get that. Yeah. Yeah. Angry yeah. but polite. Yeah, very much so. Very <laughs> controllable. So that's yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah. So that's I run that one a lot. Uh, and then I go into my Newix Atlantic, another just kind of like unknown, uh, you can see I'm not really running any name brand pedals here, mm -hmm. um, but that's the budget friendly kind of option which is really cool. And this is awesome, this is the, the Newix Atlantic. No one knows if it's, I think it's Newix, but some people say it's Nux, I think it's Newix. Um, so this <laughs> Again, is... Again in the comments people. <laughs> yeah. So this is really cool, it's a delay and reverb combined. Yep. Um, I'm often running it on the plate and the hall on this side. For this band, again, really heavy and saturated in that verb, getting that really full, full sound. Sometimes I run verb on the amp as well, just a little bit, just to kind of have the two verbs. So the reverb finishes on that and then kind of finishes on that afterwards, which is kind of a yeah, cool a long sound. tail there, yeah. Yeah, I like a long tail. You get a plate as well, and you can also hold and get kind of a really, really, really bad shimmer, which I don't use. 
but what you do have on this, it doesn't say anywhere on the pedal or in the manual, you just have to find it out. Because if you hold on the hall, you actually get like a, a full infinite kind of like, just keeps going sort of sound, which is really cool. Wow. Just... Now, now let me ask you, how did you find that out? Well, trying to do the shimmer and then it not doing a shimmer, so All right. it's yeah, one yeah. of those things. That's awesome. So that's going then on the delay side, I really like the delay. It's got um, 60s, 70s and 80s, so tape, analog and digital. Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of, for this band, have been sitting on digital a lot, which is not actually like me, but I, I, we've got a few songs that I really want that early 2000s kind of um, really uh, produced guitar, guitar sound for that. Mm. So that kind of u 2 e sort of sound kind of thing as well. Um, but it's got, I often sit on the analog and I love doing the feedback loops on this. This is something from my other band, Kimono. I really enjoy doing, getting that. It's really, really good for that. That's really fun. So that's really, really fun. So it's digital and then it goes right to the analog as well when you switched on that. You can't do that on the digital setting, which is true to how they really run. So that's really cool. Yeah. So really, I love that. So in this band, I often have delay on, like kind of roll back a little bit, use the tap, which has got built in, which is really handy. Mm. And then I'll have that kind of. <laughs> Not so much as a delay, but more as just a spatial creating kind of thing, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. So I love that pedal a lot as well. Yeah. And then we go into this, which is, again, not mine. It's my flatmate Finzabi's um, little, uh, either again, either hot one or ho tone, we don't know. Um, or hot tone. Yeah, hot one or ho, ho tone, I'm not sure. It's this wee little analog delay, which I don't use very much. But again, it's sometimes it's just always good to have if I want to, at a gig, just dial in a different delay tone and rack that on. It's also really good for feedback loops as well. Yeah. I love doing feedback loops in this band. So you've got this, it's actually got like a, um, a noise gate on there so you can't actually kind of go too far without yeah. stopping it. But what's really fun is actually running a feedback loop into a feedback loop and getting really weird with it. Change one of these. Oh, I'm really enjoying this. Yeah, super weird. Yeah. So that's kind of what I often do with those two. But this one's really good. It's also got a reverse delay on it, I think, which yeah. is which is what it's set on now, actually. So that, that's kind of cool. I haven't used it enough. I need to explore it a bit more, but yeah. you can get that kind of. Really weird sort of stuff. Great for live use, so that's yeah. super fun too. So that's the board. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. And producing it all, we got the uh, uh, Tweed yeah. Blues Junior. The Tweed Blues Junior. I'll jump over here. Does this have the uh, Does this have the upgraded speaker? Yeah. So this is running a Jensen. Um, a Jensen. Sorry. Yep. A Jensen. Um, yeah. I don't know what the model is. I think it's uh, Jensen. A ceramic, yeah, just a Jensen speaker. I don't really know much about my speakers. I'm pretty much mm -hmm. illiterate when it comes to that. But oh, so that, so that was nice. in it when you bought it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the, the Fender run um, of the the limited edition. They call it limited edition, but it's been limited edition for like five years. So I think it's just <laughs> it's um, of the of the alternate finishes yeah. comes with. Um, uh, the Jensen speakers, so they have this one. They have like an alligator skin one, which is really groovy. And I think there's another one that's. Um, like burgundy or something. So mm -hmm. Mim also has this amp, which is cool. So we both run the same amp on stage. And... Oh, the more tweed, the better. Yeah, I really, really, really <laughs> like it. It's kind of like, it's like a baby basement. Yeah. It's got that... Fullness that you need out of a, out of a, out of a small amp. I yeah. think the other Blues Juniors, just your standard Blues Junior 4s that I've run to, I find 
it's just one of those things where I don't know what it is, but I don't like it as much. And this yep. I really, really love. Yeah. It's and I think it's down to that speaker. So it's really cool. I've had this for like six years now. Mm. It's just yeah, I've never really wanted to buy another amp. Um, is this the yeah. amp that's being used mainly on the record? No. So that's that's actually not used much at all. Um, okay. I think we wanted to differentiate our sounds a bit um, for the recording. So I'm running through Loho's Yourself amp and Mim, here. You mean? Yeah. Yeah, right, yep. So I'm actually running through this amp here for, for this one. Um, mm -hmm. So this is um, Josh from Loho kindly has let me use his Fender Vibrolux reissue. Mm -hmm. So this is a really fun wee thing. Um, this is what I'm running on mainly this band when it warms up. And get a bit of, oh, there we go. So a bit more of a full sound. Yeah. Really, 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 really like the sound, you know. That's beautiful. enjoying the way that guitar sounds through the two different amps mm -hmm. as well. It's, you get, yeah, you really get that. It's amazing, yeah. You it's, get a certain amount of filter. So what I actually used on this um, is I actually used the vibe. Um, kind of used it, at, I think it was like probably five intensity. So it hurts like hell, which is one of the singles we've recorded here today, has mm -hmm. a vibe on it. Um, and you kind of get the... <laughs> So it's got that, yeah, I, I thought when I was coming into it that I'd put like a really slow, simple trim on it, mm -hmm. but actually having that really fast and not too intense, but still noticeable also works. Yep. I, you know, I thought it would be too intense, but it's got really, really nice sound. So I've used a lot of trim on that, or vibrato as they call it, mm -hmm. um, as well, which is really cool. So yeah, that's what I've been running for this. Beautiful. And I really like it. I wish it was mine. <laughs> <laughs> really, uh, yeah, really looking forward to hearing uh, hearing these tones on, on the two singles that yeah. are coming out. When yeah. are they coming out again, mate? So uh, currently the ideal time frame is probably going to be, I think, our first single, which is called Germaphobe yep. at the stage. I don't know if we'll change that up anytime soon, but I think we're releasing Germaphobe first. Yeah. Um, that will it's be... kind of appropriate for these times. I know, right? right? <laughs> yeah. She wrote it before COVID, so that's pretty um, wow, really? coincidental. Yeah. yeah um, uh, we're releasing that one hopefully before the end of the year, maybe like November, late November, mm -hmm. December. Yeah. And then early next year, maybe Jan, Feb kind of thing, we'll follow up with this like hell after that. Excellent. Um, Looking, yeah. forward, looking forward to hearing them, man. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, really to, looking forward to, to getting them out in the world. It's been been such a fun time checking all this out, man. Cheers, um, man. And I think there's a new fan in myself for Italia guitars. Oh, they're amazing. Love Some of the guitars are really, really yeah. weird. This is probably the most standard kind of one, but yeah. I love it. It's yeah. so great. Yeah. Yeah. No, and again, thanks for having us, my bro. My pleasure. Thank awesome, you. Awesome Thank getting you. a rundown of your gear. Yeah, uh, no big worries. thanks to Loho Studios for allowing us to come in and film here. Um, and yeah, once again, looking Killer. forward to hearing the singles and all the upcoming projects too. You'll yeah, find cheers. some details in the uh, description down below. We'll cheers. see you next time.